Hey everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video. So this week I'm going to do something slightly different and it's something that I struggled with when I first started out as a junior doctor and it's how I did my medical notes and wardrobes. And as you can imagine, it's super busy, you're the most junior doctor, you're a foundation trainee and you've got loads of patients and you have to document and prepare their notes for this wardrobe with the consultant. And I thought, let me share with you how I do my notes from start to finish and all the different acronyms so that you can follow along with me. Lots of people do their notes in very different ways. It's subjective. Different specialties do their notes in their own style, but I'm going to show you how to do a very generic one. So when you do start your foundation training or that first day as a junior doctor, you'll have a good insight of how to kind of lay it out, how to document it, what are the key important things to do. So I'm not going to take too long with this video. I'm going to go straight into it and I hope you really enjoy it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. So the first thing with documenting notes is obviously make sure you have a continuation sheet, make sure it's got all the patient details. So you normally need three different types of patient identifiable information. So their name, the hospital ID, some people use the NHS number and the date of birth. Um, I normally like to start on a fresh clean page, especially early in the morning when I come to start. Um, so you can imagine on this side, there will be the patient's surname, their first name, the number. So we can just call the surname Smith, first name John, and the hospital number can be one, two, three, four, five. You should always document it in black, in clear, legible ink, hospital, and normally people have a lot of stickers. So you can start off with in the morning, so 9 a.m., and you can do it on the date of the recording, so the 20th of the 1st, 2021. Normally I start with WR, and that means ward round. Then you can put your initials, so Dr. Abdul, in your grade, SHO, which means a senior house officer. And if I'm doing the ward run with my consultant, I'd add their name. So, Dr. Rahman. And here I'd put, which means consultant. Then I start by recording their news. I underline it. RR means the respiratory rate, so we can make these up as we go along. SAT, let's say 96%. Sometimes they do this in brackets RA, which just means on room air. You can follow it with blood pressure, heart rate, and temperature. And let's say they've got a slight of a temperature, so 36 or just normal. And that's the beginning way I set the notes out. I then like to put the age, so 64, that means female, and I'll start with what they were admitted with. So 64 year old female admitted with shortness of breath plus a productive cough. This means with. And then you can list your current issues. For them, let's say she's got a pneumonia, so she's got a cat, which is a community acquired pneumonia. Second, she had you can say she had hyponatremia. However, it's resolved. She's on comoxiclavir, which is just an antibiotic. And we can just say she's on day four of seven and I'll explain what this means. You also, some people like to do it, I like to do it is I like to list out their past medical history on this side and it can be, you know, stuff like they got hypertension, they got type two diabetes and they may have osteoarthritis. And you list that out of all the other medical conditions they have. Some people can start in terms of issues that may have happened overnight um, or recent scans they may have had. So under here, what I usually do is, let's say she's had a chest x-ray, 
it will be she's got a right basal consolidation and I normally just copy whatever is on the chest x-ray so I put my bloods on the left hand side I date it so maybe the bloods from that very morning so the 20th of January and here you can outline it so your hemoglobin your platelets your MCV you can kind of break it down even further into your white cells your neutrophil count you can talk about your lymphocytes especially with COVID um, then I kind of go to my electrolytes or CRP sodium potassium once I've kind of got all of this information which can be a bit more lengthier you can have less information you can have more information some people write you know history and events noted I kind of start with the assessment of the patient in terms of patient alert and awake comfortable at rest and the general way I ask questions is generic you know are they comfortable had they had breakfast that morning how are the symptoms they came in with are they resolving so for a 64 year female asks how's the shortness of breath how's her cough is she still producing any sort of sputum um, and it's generally are you open your bowels are you able to pass water um, any nausea and vomiting and I kind of document it sometimes I document how the patient feels as well so sometimes I say yeah I feel a lot better since when I came in and you kind of document all of that so let's say she's alert and awake she's comfortable at the rest um, there's no obvious respiratory distress no reports of pain she's eating plus drinking well She's opening her bowels, so bowels opened one in seven, and I'll explain what that means. And she's got a good urine output. And you can always jot down the numbers if you're keeping an input output chart off, they've got a catheter in situ. Um, and you can kind of write as little as much as you want, but you want to give a holistic picture so that you know if someone comes to check the notes later on today, they can see how she was in the morning, if she does particularly deteriorate throughout the day. The next key part, and um, something that I was a bit confused with and so many different people doing so many different styles is how they examine the patient. So we've done all that, now we're on to the examination stage. So, which means on examination. And I normally start with the news already there. I start by having a generic look at the patient. Is she comfortable? Is she laying in bed? Um, and I'll focus on the actual drawings of the um, system so the chest the abdomen and the calves and whatnot so let's say this is the chest you can draw it however you want and let's say she's got a clear chest today because antibiotics are working and that means it's clear there are different variations and once we've completed the sets of notes I'll show you how they are and I'll go to examine her heart so heart sounds one plus zero 1 plus 2 plus 0 so that means heart sounds 1 plus 2 plus the 0 means there's no additional sounds you can then go on to examine her abdomen and a lot of people write SMT which means soft non tender they also write bs positive which means bowel sounds are also positive you may know that some people may have a catheter so they do that and they do a catheter and they write 250 mils of urine but people do it very different ways and then if you're examining her calves I do, it, I do calves, same as before, soft, non tender. Once you've examined the patients, you kind of review all of their drug charts, their fluid balances, and it's important you start to go into their plan. For this lady, we'll keep it simple, and I like to number it it's continue ABX, which means antibiotics. For she's on day seven, so let's give her seven, seven course. We want to continue her antibiotic. We want repeat bloods today. 
and then we can say um, we can give our target sats so we want to aim sats for anything above 94 percent and the plan can be as short and as long as you want it can be continuing antibiotics it may be you know liaising with specialist teams requesting scans requesting blood and um, your consultant may review and add additional tests but what I want to show is the general structure of how I do medical notes and it's a structure I've kept since the first day of um, working as a junior doctor and I've just kind of improved on it. A good thing is to see how other doctors do it, copying the good parts, um, seeing okay I like the way they do this, I like the way they do that. Um, so that's the generic way. I thought I'd also spend some time talking about the different numbers, the acronyms, how to describe certain examination findings. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to flip it over. We can start with the chest again. So we can put open examination. So we already know this means clear. So let's say you examine the patient, you notice some crackles, especially at the bases of her lungs. You can do it like this. You can put little crosses, which means bilateral crackles. And you may notice that let's say it's a COPD patient or someone that's come in and they've got reduced air entry. What I do, I do little arrows that go down to show it has reduced air entry. And of course, if you do it on both sides, it means bilateral. You may have a patient that comes in that has loads of widespread wheezes. So that's depicted like this with this musical notes. So you can say bilateral wheezes and people do it in different ways but as long as you depict it in a picture format as well as writing on the bottom what it means it's a good way for people that do come and assess a review later of what the examination findings were in that moment of time when you went and assessed her in terms of the abdomen same thing again they might have had a surgery so let's say midline laparotomy so this is a midline incision especially if they just had surgery a few days ago, you can comment in terms of is it pink, is it healthy, is there any discharge, is it healing well? Uh, some people may even have a stoma, and this is how I represent the stoma, and I always mention if it's active. And there are various other ways, and there are lots of incisions and scars, but it's very good to document it so um, you have a good understanding in terms of patient. So heart sounds, like I said before, one plus two plus one means both heart sounds heard plus an additional sound, which may be a murmur. And then you can talk about if it's an ejection systolic murmur, where you heard it loudest. So that should generally cover the different things that can crop up for chest examination, abdominal examination, and the different type of heart sounds. In terms of depicting numbers, days, weeks, um, generally in medicine, so number of hours is x with this little diagram sign which equals let's say eight hours so number of days is x and then you got this slash seven so let's say four out of seven equals day four or four days and if you want to mention something about weeks for the heads you can say better so number of weeks equals x out of 52 because there's 52 weeks in a year so example may be 12 out of 52 that means on the 12th week or week 12 and when I first saw this I really never got my head around it. I don't understand what the slashes meant I didn't know what 7 meant I didn't know what 52 meant so those are a really brief rundown of the way I document notes. You may be wondering why doctors are taking forever to come see you. You may have been told the doctors are in at 9, but it's only until like 10, 11 o'clock when they do come and finally see you. It's because there is a lot of notes, especially in the medical ward, of condensing what's been happening so far, kind of planning what you want to do before we do come, come and see you. I hope this has helped you um, in terms of the video. And I think the most important thing is being able to like clearly having understanding, having your own style. There's no point copying someone else's style. Um, if it doesn't work with you, if it's not in the way you are thinking and processing your thoughts. Um, and it's one of those things that improve over time and you may see things that people have done 
and when you click, do you know what, that's a really good way of depicting or sharing this information, I want to copy it over. Um, but I hope that has given you a baseline in terms of how to start documenting in medical notes for patients. Um, and the most important thing at the end of it, once you've done it, you have to sign off. So your initials, your GMC number, and SHO level, and sometimes you can put the bleep if they need to get hold of you. Um, so they know it's something that you documented. Um, let me know how you think. Let me know how you do things differently. Perhaps you have a different style together. You may think this is completely wrong, but I'm happy to hear it. Um, so let us know your thoughts in the, in the comments below. So I hope you've all kind of enjoyed watching that. Um, for all the final year medics that are transitioning to a junior doctor in the next coming few months, I hope that gives you some sort of baseline. Um, and if you're not a medic and you just enjoy the stuff we're putting out, I hope you really enjoyed it as well. It's quite fun to see what doctors get up to on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and I don't know if you guys know, I'm an avid lover of writing. I'm old school pen and paper. I know that a lot of people are using iPads to make notes, kind of going world rounds with computers. We didn't have that luxury. So I did a lot of writing, went through a lot of pens. Just a fun video, I really enjoyed making it. Let me know what you think. If you like the stuff we're putting out, um, make sure you comment, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, um, and let us know what you want to see. But I'll see you the week after next, because next week is Amzi's time. See you guys later.